El Ocean, my friends, the Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. <laughs> George Burns and Gracie Allen with Craig Parker, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. And now for those two friendly hands, George Burns and Heinz Honey, Gracie Allen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, Gracie. Coming down to the studio tonight, I saw a big banner saying vote for Gracie. Yeah, I know. All over town, I see billboards saying put Gracie in the White House. Mm-hmm. It's in the newsreels. It's in the papers. Signs right here on the stage saying send Gracie to Washington. What does this mean? Well, George, I- I- I'll let you in on a secret. I'm running for president. <laughs> you, you're running? You're running for president? Yes. Gracie, how long has this been going on? Well, for 150 years. George Washington started it. <laughs> Gracie, why are you running for president? Well, because that's the only way you can get to the White House. You can't just walk in and sit down. The idea is preposterous. And not only that, but it pays good money. <laughs> Look, you don't stand a chance. Presidents are born. Well, what do you think I was, hatched? <laughs> There's nobody who'd be any happier about your success than I'd be. But in the entire history of the United States, there's never been a woman president. Well, yeah, isn't that exciting? I'll be the first one. But I tell you that... Hello, George. Hello, Gracie. Oh, Hello. Frank. I tell you, you haven't got a Chinaman's chance. Well, I don't know about that. Confucius say, lady who has eye on presidential chair pretty soon gets seat on it. <laughs> and George Burns say, girl who talk nutty Wednesday make good nut Sunday. Oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, how do you like that joke, Frank? Egyptian monument. Egyptian monument? Sphinx. It does, huh? <laughs> Gracie, have you any idea what a, what, what a person has to be before they can become president? Sure, elected. <laughs> the whole thing is absurd. Oh, stop worrying, George. I may not even be elected until next November. Well, that's a load off my mind. I might not even be in the White House before 1941. I see. In other words, you're as good as in. I'm better than in. What do you mean you're better than in? Well, if I was in now, I'd have to be getting out next January. <laughs> You, the President of the United States. And Mexico. And Mexico? Well, sure. It's just across the border from California, so it'll be easy for them to vote for me. Hmm. What about Canada? It'll be a landslide. You know, this may be a shock to you, but there are some places that don't belong to the United States. So what? How many votes are there in Glendale anyway? (laughs) For President, it takes a person with tremendous stamina. A person with unusual ability and sound judgment. A mental genius. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> the president has to have courage and show plenty of backbone. Show plenty of backbone? Well, where do you see my new evening dress? Still doesn't make you a leader of men. You have to have plenty of followers. Well, where do you see my new evening dress? Oh, quiet. The president must have determination. He must let people see what he's made of. Well, where do you see, see my, my new evening dress? dress? I know. I know. <laughs> Say, Gracie, when you're elected president... You ought to change the income tax laws so all stars are allowed the same deductions. Frank, in this country, everybody's allowed the same deductions. Oh, yeah? Look what Sally Rand is allowed to take off each year. <laughs> How do I get mixed up in these things? Well, Frank's helping me in my campaign. Then it'll be a tremendous success. Sure. Yeah. You see, every day I have to go out and kiss a lot of babies. And Frank goes along with me to kiss the mothers. <laughs> yeah. He does, huh? Yes. Oh, yes, boy, and I'm a terrific speaker. Why, I address 500 mothers this afternoon. What did you say to him? Get in line there, kiddies. Get in line there. Kiddies? <laughs> yeah, he did. Now, listen to me, Gracie. This thing has got to stop before it goes too far. Say, George, didn't you know that Gracie was running for president? Sure, I knew it. But I didn't think she was serious. Why, certainly she's serious. So are Dewey and Garner. Yeah, but Dewey and Garner have political affiliations. Well, maybe that's because they weren't vaccinated. <laughs> You don't understand. Have you got a Republican or a Democratic machine in back of you? No. No, that's a bustle. A bustle? <laughs> well, I knew it looks good. Glad isn't, I asked. Isn't it exciting, George? Isn't what exciting? Well, if Gracie gets in, it'll be the first time that a woman president has ever been elected for a third term. A third term? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, she's done a splendid job. I mean, you show me in the other country where you can get a double-decker ice cream cone for a nickel. <laughs> Ray, I've got a surprise for you. Gracie hasn't done her first and second term yet. 
You've got them mixed up with Roosevelt. Oh, no, I haven't. Roosevelt lives in the White House in Washington, and Gracie lives in the Yellow House in Beverly Hills. I know. <laughs> Ray, sometime I'm going to have you psychoanalyze. Oh, thanks just the same, George. But I've already taken out my first papers. Well, welcome to our country. <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever heard Miss of. Miss Allen, hi, me think, and the photographers are ready now to take those campaign pictures. Oh, oh, well, now don't go away, boys. I'll be right back. Now, listen to me, fellas. Stop worrying, George. Gracie's promised to give us all swell government jobs. Government jobs? Sure. Are you sap enough to fall for that, Truman? Sap? Just a minute, George. That's no way to speak to a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> Supreme Court Justice? Truman, do you actually believe... Just think, George. I'll be the only ambassador to Great Britain who ever played a violin. <laughs> Gracie told you that she would make you ambassador to Great Britain, huh? Yes. Oh, I had my choice of that, or Secretary of the Navy. I see. But you didn't want to be Secretary of the Navy. No, I look so silly in a sailor suit. <laughs> this whole thing is ridiculous. What did she promise to make you, Frank? Secretary of the Treasury? Well, she wanted to judge, but I'm too smart to tumble for anything like that. Well, I'm glad that somebody left on this program with some sense. I'm the new Postmaster General. <laughs> Postmaster General? Sure, on account of my experience. What experience have you had? Want to play post office? Oh, go away. <laughs> go away. <laughs> silly man. Oh, boys, boys, wait till you see the picture I had taken. I'm not interested in any picture. We're here to do a broadcast. Did you know, the, the Democrats have a donkey and the Republicans have an elephant. What have you got, a squirrel? Oh, I wish I'd thought of that. Hmm. But I posed with a kangaroo. A kangaroo? Well, it'll make a wonderful campaign picture. I'll bet. It was a mama kangaroo and the little baby kangaroo was sticking his head out of the pouch. And it's a got... baby kangaroo sticking his head out of the pouch? Yes, and it's got to be my election slogan. What slogan? It's in the bag. It is, <laughs> Back. Has any man ever said to you, darling, I love you forever? He says forever, but in your secret heart you know he means forever as long as you keep yourself attractive. So by all means, help your hands keep their smooth loveliness. Use Heinz Honey and Almond Cream day in and day out. Every single ingredient in Heinz Lotion is good for rough or tender skin, whether it's on your face, your hands, or your body. This fine, fragrant cream helps prevent chapping and roughness and that awful weathered dryness that makes your skin look so drawn and old. Smooth Heinz lotion all over your red hands and wrists. Notice how even one application makes your chapped hands feel softer, look more appealing. Use Heinz as a powder base, too. See how evenly it holds the powder, no caking at all. And as a body rub, Heinz is a honey. It's so extra creamy, extra softening, that every drop brings real soothing comfort to tender skin. Heinz Honey and Almond Cream contains two vitamins, two A and D. You can count on Heinz, H-I-N-D-S, for softer, smoother, lovelier skin on hands, face, and body. Now... Whispering, I love you, my dear. Bravo, bravo, Frank. That was swell. Ah, uh, you're just saying that because I'm the postmaster general. Oh, stop. Yes, you are. So, man. Frank, I just sent a telegram to my campaign chairman in the Middle West. Oh, good. He told me he couldn't get any support from the farm bell. So what? So I told him to wear suspenders. <laughs> what happens if the county seat has two pairs of pants? Oh, George, you're just trying to say that to make me say silly things so people will laugh at me. That's bad, huh? <laughs> say, Gracie, 
Gracie, what's going to be the name of your party? Well, Truman, you've heard of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party? Yes. Well, mine's going to be the surprise party. <laughs> the what? The surprise party. Surprise. That's you R P R I S E. Yeah, S for screwy, U for useless. Yeah, and R for reading, writing, and arithmetic. T for pinhead. Yeah, and R for uh, oysters are in season. And I, the knife for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. And S for some fun, and E for pencil. E, E for pencils? Ever sharp? <laughs> well, that old uh, pencil on how you look at oh, it. Oh, it's even pages. Say, say, the surprise party's a swell name, I think. How'd you happen to call it that, Gracie? Well... My daddy is a Democrat, and my mother is a Republican. And when I was born, I was a surprise. So was the panic of 1907. Gracie? Yes, Bobo? You know those temporary campaign headquarters we opened on Broadway this morning? Yes. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to move them. Why? There's a streetcar coming. Oh. Gracie, just tell the streetcar, believe it or not, you're waiting to be president. Oh, Gracie, I'm working on your campaign song. You've got a campaign song? Oh, yes. It starts like this. I'll be down to get you with the taxpayers' money. Better be ready by the half past eight. Oh, dearie, don't be late. Quiet, quiet. Oh, yes, Let's sing a song. Idea. What do you say? <laughs> oh, by the way, Gracie, uh, you know those pictures in Life magazine of that Republican candidate catching that big mackerel at Miami? Yes. Well, I just found out that he's just caught it again in Lake Michigan. <laughs> Ray, the whole thing was done to get votes. No, really. What's the fish running for? It's because it's because it doesn't want to get caught. Miss Talon, did you see this morning's paper? No, what was in it? My lunch. <laughs> Your lunch? George, this is my publicity man, Gene. How do? Well, I'll run along now, but don't forget, Miss Allen, you're jumping out of that plane in the morning. <laughs> you're jumping out of a plane in the morning? Only 10,000 feet. It's just to attract attention. You're liable to get killed. Well, sure, but look at all the publicity I'll get. Gracie, will you stop this? Miss because... Allen, I'm a sign painter. Are the slogans ready for your campaign signs? Oh, well, I'll make up a few right now. Bubbo, get a pencil. Okay. Um, hmm, number one. Uh, Confucius says, Gracie Allen for prayers. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I got it. Uh, number two. Um, Gracie Allen for alderman. Gracie Allen for Alderman? Yeah, and all the men for Gracie Allen. <laughs> hey, that's wonderful. Yes, and baking powder for Burns. Uh, number three. <laughs> um. Oh, well, oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, number three, we'll make one sign with nothing on it. A sign with nothing on it? Sure, to get the nudist boat. <laughs> That's wonderful. Gracie, why don't you have a doctor examine your head, and if he finds anything, have somebody examine the doctor. Well, that would be a good idea for me, too. Yes, do that. You know, I think this will make an awfully jolly sign, Gracie. If you're 21, vote for Gracie Allen. If you're not 21, have your mother do it for you. If your mother isn't 21, ask your father. If your father isn't 21, then don't bother reading this sign. Oh, I like that. That's good. That's wonderful. Sign painter, get out of here with that's wonderful. All right, Mr. Boynes, but you'll hear from me when I'm Attorney General. <laughs> At least, Gracie, if you are elected, I'll get rid of you for four years. Twelve years. Twelve years? For sure, I'm not superstitious about third terms. You know. <laughs> Do you people realize that right now our sponsor is probably listening? Oh, I say bubbles. I happen to see a drawing of you on the Republican poster. Quite flattering, too. Who drew that? Mr. Noble, that was an elephant. <laughs> It's amazing. What will they teach them to do next? Cheerio. Oh, cheerio. Yeah. You know, Gracie, I've been worrying about the speeches you're going to make at your rallies. Have you rallied? Yes, have you rallied. <laughs> well, wait till you hear the speeches, crew, and then you'll have something to worry about. Well, I'm serious, George. You see, Gracie, a presidential candidate has to shake hands with millions of people. Yes, yes. we don't know what's coming. Why, in a single campaign, the average candidate shakes enough hands to milk all the cows in the country. Is that so? Mm -hmm. And what do they do with all the milk? <laughs> they they use it to whitewash their opponents. Say, George, is it true that the whitewash is That's enough, the Gracie. You don't even have to finish it. Just George, stay where you are. So at your rallies, Gracie, I can protect you. 
You see, before each meeting, I can tell the voters how Heinz Honey and Almond Cream will make their hands soft and make their hands white and make their hands smooth. Well, what if they've only got two hands? Then they can use a small bottle. Oh. See what I mean? A small size. Yes. Why, if they'll only use a 25-cent bottle while you're speaking, Gracie, their hands will be thrilling to touch and good till the last drop. Oh, when you're thinking of Maxwell House coffee. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Oh, hello, Tim. Hello, Miss Allen. Well, they said I couldn't do it. Well, I couldn't get anywhere here in Los Angeles, so I flew right to Sacramento. I couldn't get the first base there. So without food or sleep, I went on to Jefferson City, Missouri, from there to Springfield, Illinois, on into Albany, New York City, and then to Washington, D.C., and I clicked. Nice work. Here it is. Uh... What is that? Horns. Horns? I've got to give them out at my convention. Well, I give up. These are uh, three dollars a dozen, Miss Allen, and they're a steal. Okay, steal me a dozen. <laughs> now, here's a horn that the Republicans and Democrats are using. <laughs> of course, this is very hard to blow. Oh, well, they have more wind than we have. <laughs> yeah, but not between the ears. And what is this convention? For the Chamber of Commerce. Well, where are you going to hold it? By the handle. Come on, come on. <laughs> Take a letter. All right. Now, is the letter important, or can I leave my gloves on? Well, it's... Tracy, just... you better talk quietly. She uses a soft pencil. Oh. Um, letter. Uh, Frank, what's today's date? Elsie. Edna couldn't make it. February 28th. Oh. All right, I'm ready. Oh, good. To all other presidential candidates, semicolon, United States of America, period, gentlemen, question mark. <laughs> Gentlemen, question mark. I've got it. Well, boys, the jig is up. Well, it's a nice opening. <laughs> Election day will be in November this year. Turkeys will cost you 38 cents a pound. Cranberries will be 50 cents a bucket. Plum puddings will be $2 each. But a good president won't cost you a nickel, so be sure and go out and vote for me. <laughs> You're, you're asking the other presidential candidates to vote for you? Well, sure, there's so many presidential candidates that if I only get half of them to vote for me, I'm bound to be elected. 
I see what you mean. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, this letter is being dictated by a lady, typewritten by a lady, so don't forget to take your hats off while you're reading it. <laughs> I've got it. All right. Signed it, Gracie Allen, President of the United States, and mail it out right away. Gracie, you're not president yet. Well, I will be by the time this letter is delivered. That's some letter. And Bubbles make uh, 50,000 copies. Uh, one for each candidate. Yes. I thought so, yes. Uh, Bubbles address the envelopes in girlish handwriting. Mark it personal and send it to their home. I want their wives to read it, too. <laughs> 50,000 copies. Well, it's a nice hunk of postage to throw away. What do you mean, postage? I'll initial the corners of the envelopes, and they won't need stamps. Frank, will you believe this? For a minute, I forgot that you were Postmaster General. Well, that's life, I guess. Yes, I guess it's so. Miss Allen, the reporters are here. Oh, oh, well, send them in. The reporters? Uh-huh. This way, gentlemen. Oh, Miss Allen, I'm Harry Crocker, the examiner. I do. Matt Weinstock, Daily News. I Casey do. Shaw, Los Angeles Times. I do. Gracie, why are you shaking hands with your left hand? Well, I'm saving my right hand for when I'm president. I do. I do. Mm. Miss Allen, my newspaper wants to know just what your platform is. Well, it's naughty pine trimmed with oak and inlaid with California red. That's to match your head. Yes. I thought so, yes. Now, Miss Allen, what would be the first thing you would do if you were elected? I'd put my daddy in the Senate. Your daddy doesn't know anything about the Senate. Oh, yeah, he's been making speeches from the floor for years. He's still on the floor, I'll bet. That's my daddy. That's the kid, yeah. <laughs> Miss Allen, my city editor wants to know what your opinion is on capitalism versus the little man. Oh, I know. I never go to wrestling matches. <laughs> Are you in favor of monopolies? Oh, well, I don't play Monopoly. I like my job better. Yes. <laughs> yes. What do you think of the neutrality bill? Well, if we owe it, let's pay it. Tracy, why don't you call this all? You know you know nothing about it. You haven't said one thing that's right. Well, I'd rather be president than right. Boys, there's no use trying to interview her. Mr. Burns, will you stop balling her up? I'm balling her up? Yes. yes. Quiet. Yes. Miss Allen, all the other candidates are talking on how to bring back prosperity. Now, what's your point? She doesn't even know what prosperity is. I do, too. Prosperity is when business is good enough so that you can buy the things on credit that you can't afford anyway, and that way you can save enough money to pay cash for new things after they've taken back the things you've got on credit. <laughs> How are you doing, boys? Miss Allen, would you recognize Russia? Well, that's hard to say. You see, I meet so many people. <laughs> you don't have to meet them all on this program, do you? Uh, what do you think of the British blockade? Oh, we'll get by. We will, Alan. Look, I say, George, I don't mind being referred to as British, but I do object to being called a blockade. <laughs> boys, this is Ray Noble. Hello, I do. He looks like a pipe cleaner I once threw away. Well, now, that's possible. Uh, where did you throw me? Cheerio. Oh, Cheerio. Cheerio, yeah. Uh, Miss Allen, what do you think of our national debt? Well, we ought to be proud of it. It's the biggest in the world. Boys, either go ahead or just go so that we can do our broadcast. Quiet. Quiet. Yeah, yeah quiet. quiet. Now, Miss Allen, how would you keep our gold reserve from shrinking? Well, I'd wash it in luck. <laughs> Truman. Truman, maybe you can get these guys out. Well, I'll try, George. Say, boys, uh, I've got a bottle in my overcoat. A, a, a bottle? bottle? Scotch or rye? Hi, I'm Sonny Norman Cream. Thanks, Truman. <laughs> You're too late, Truman. I gave that bottle to my girl. She's got a couple of chaps I'm trying to get rid of. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> boys, this is Frank Parker, the Postmaster General. Well, he ought to be swell. He's got a face like an old-style one-cent stamp. Mm. It's a nice TL for you, Pinky. Thanks. Now, Miss Allen, just a few more questions. Boys. Is there anything Boys. you can actually... Boys, are you through? Not yet, Mr. Burns, but don't feel that you have to stick around on our account. Now, this is the end. I'm going to call up the sponsor and explain the whole thing to him. I'm not going to lose my job. Come on, boys, let's finish the interview. Operator, get me long distance. Hold the line. Miss Allen, is there anything... Now, please, that... boys, Mr. Burns is calling the sponsor. Hey, this noble guy looks very familiar. Uh, Mr. Noble, didn't I once see you in Yonkers... I don't think so. I haven't worn a pair of Yonkers in years. Long distance. Get me Mr. Marvin of the Heinz Honey Armor Cream for, for, uh, uh, Company, New York. Oh, the lion. Miss Allen, is there anything that you can actually promise the voters? Oh, sure. I can promise voters that if I can't find a way to reduce the high cost of living, then we'll just have to do without it. 
Here's your party. Hello, Mr. Marvin. Yes? This is George Burns speaking. Oh, yes. How are you? Well, I just want to call you up and tell you that I have nothing to do with Gracie's running for president. I've been trying to do a broadcast, and all she's been doing is giving away political jobs. Well, that's but... the president's privilege, and believe me... Oh, quiet. Me... Quiet. Let me get through talking. It's ridiculous, Mr. Marvin, making an orchestra leader an ambassador, making a tenor a postmaster general, and making an announcer a Supreme Court justice. It's not my doings, and I just want to tell you that I'm not going to stand for it. Just a minute, Mr. Burns. Don't raise your voice to the Secretary of State. Secretary of State? Well, I... And here's a bit of handy advice. Children love playing in the snow. But you know how that cold wind and freezing slush can chaff their hands and knees? They come indoors with cheeks as red as apples, looking so healthy and lovable. But the first thing you know, their tender skin feels so uncomfortable. And their little hands are so red and chapped, you feel possibly sorry for them. Now, it's easy to help guard against chapping in the first place. Train your youngsters to cream their hands and faces with Heinz before going out in the cold. Heinz Honey and Almond Cream is extra creamy, extra softening. Helps keep skin smooth and comfortable. Put a bottle of Heinz in the coat closet, ready to smooth on hands and faces and knees. Children love Heinz. It's so nice and fragrant, not sticky either. Just feels so grand and soothing. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at Totally Goods counters in 10, 25, 50 cent sizes or the big economy dollar size for family use. And now Gracie will sing Chula Chihuahua. Sing it. All the Caliente, I'll never forget. All the Caliente, there is where I bought a pet. A little toy, oh boy, oh boy. My chihuahua, he is my pride and joy. How I love to promenade the boulevard, oh, my chihuahua. Stamos everywhere when I'm walking my chihuahua. All the dogs are jealous because the fellas keep petting my chihuahua. Though he isn't much protection, that's why men show their affection for me. See, 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 see. He goes woof, woof, woof. Chula, chula. Bow, bow, woof. Bonita, bonita. Woof, woof, woof. Figurita, figurita. In Mexico, it's I love you. If you're lonely, there is only one thing to do. Get at your wawa. Walk this way. Hip, hip, hooray. Chula, chihuahua. Chihuahua, wawa. 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 Time is the time they come to true time with me and my chihuahua. Dogs of noble pedigree are jealous of me and my chihuahua. But I prefer him to a Scotty cause he's just a little naughty. I'm glad he's not a terrier because he makes life merrier. He's better than a setter cause he's such a great go-getter. He's smarter than a poodle. He knows how to use his noodle. I'm in my wonderful chihuahua. Now you can enjoy both Heinz lotion in bottles and Heinz hand cream in jars. Those smart red and white jars contain the fluffiest, creamiest hand cream Heinz could make. Like the famous Heinz lotion, the new Heinz hand cream is quick softening for chapped hands. It comes in two sizes, 10 cents and 39 cents a jar. Thanks, Truman. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. No, wait. First, I want to thank Bill Coram for his lovely wire endorsing my campaign. Well, good. Now say goodnight. Well, goodnight. I'll see you in the White House. Say goodnight. <laughs> Next Wednesday, at this same time, over these same stations, George and Gracie and all the rest of us will be back again. Don't forget. And don't forget, for Honeymoon Hands, it's Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 